Hi everyone, this is the second in a short series of videos on Lowe's to Live display processing. Now in this video, using version .10, and I've enabled my test mode. So what I've done is I've taken some exposures that were kindly sent to me quite a while ago during the early stages of development by Dr. D of uh, Messier 1, the Crab Nebula. And what I've done is I've allowed the program to run and basically stack together five images in median stacking mode. And now I'm just going to uh, quickly process it to give you guys an idea of the kind of actions you take when you're actually out there observing. Now I'll start off by pointing out that you can adjust any of the display processing whilst you're live imaging and taking data. So there's no need to wait until you've, say, taken five or ten exposures. You can you can be fiddling around with the display as, a, as it's uh, turning away in the background. And that, that, that's quite good because it allows you to see different elements of the objects you're, you're looking at. So uh, we'll kick straight in. Now, in this image, the histogram, uh, we can see everything's pretty much down the very uh, the, the black end. So, as it is currently now, we're displaying, we're scaling the display completely over the 16-bit range. So that's why you see very, very little apart from the very brightest stars. And on the subject of colour balance, you can probably already see that the uh, this image has got the red level is much higher. So it's going to it's going to look pretty, have a pretty big red tinge to it. So the first thing I do in this version. And again, I'm, I'm not completely happy with the way the image modifiers work, but this is kind of the routine I regularly use, is, uh, is apply some, some gamma. Uh, when I initially do this, I have all the channels uh, modify all, so it modifies all the channels at once. Although I should also point out, personally, I've only got the mono version. But for all you guys with the colour, start off by modifying all the, the channels simultaneously. And just by flicking that up some, we can already actually start to see the uh, the elusive nebula itself. So the next thing you want to do is to try to stretch the data out as wide as possible. So you use the contrast control to do that and stretch it out. Now, because of the way this currently works, stretching will have the effect of shifting the histogram around. So we can see that it's moved over slightly, but that's okay because at the moment there's nothing really clipped. Now as you stretch and move data around, you have to be mindful that some areas of detail might be very have very small values in the histogram and maybe at the extreme. So as you shift them around, it could push them to the limit and thus clip them, but it's not so in this image. So now we've got a uh, reasonably stretched histogram and we can, we can definitely start to see the Carab Nebula and the image as we expect is looking quite reddish. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in so I can see it a bit better by dragging it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift this red level down so it roughly in line with the green and the blue. So we'll untick modify all, check red, and then move the brightness, which has the effect of shifting left and shifting right, until the red's roughly in line like so. And then the green, it's not quite in line, so we'll... We'll just move that up a touch like that. So that should be roughly the colour balanced. Now we want to this the, the nebula itself looks pretty faint, so we want to be able to emphasize and bring that out. So what I will tend to do is start to bring down the white level. Now if we bring it down too far, we clip out the detail in the middle of the nebula, the brighter parts. So that, that's too far over. So if I move it back to the right, and I'll move it until you just stop clipping it. So it's roughly, that's clipping, and it's probably about there. Now at this point, Lowe's to Live is only scaling the data between the black level and this modified white level. So the range of values has actually been scaled between 0 and 18,655. So now we see a lot more of the, uh, the noise in the background and, and the black of space looks quite washed out. So it's now time to move the black level up until we get something where uh, we're pretty happy with. 
So as I move it up, now if I move it too far, you'll see that we start clipping out details in the nebula. So that's not good. So what I do is I'll just wind it in until I've got a good compromise between detail in the object and the noise. I'm trying to get the space to look nice and pitch black. And again, you might just want to tweak the white level a little bit. Um, move that down a little bit, up a little bit, I think. And I think that'll, that'll roughly do. So when I zoom back out, then, uh, then that'll be my final image.